открываем работу секции номер 6. Обучение иностранному языку для специальных и академических целей в новой образовательной реальности. А мой технический ассистент Юлия Эдуардовна Лялина, также уважаемые коллеги, работа секции сопровождается синхронным переводом. Я хотела бы напомнить вам о функциональных возможностях системы Zoom. Обратите внимание на панели внизу, вы можете переключать язык, заходить в русскую кабину, в английскую кабину. Мы благодарим нашу команду переводчиков за обеспечение перевода и создание атмосферы научной дискуссии. Я также хотела бы, уважаемые коллеги, напомнить вам, о том, что вы можете, и, пожалуйста, делайте это, отключайте свой микрофон, если вы не выступаете. Напоминаю и о регламенте в 10 минут на выступление и 5 минут для ответов на вопросы аудитории. Предлагаю задавать вопросы как через чат, так и устно. Пожалуйста, на ваше усмотрение. Не волнуйтесь, если будут какие-то сбои со связью, связь восстановится, и вы сможете э, зачитать свой э, доклад. Уважаемые коллеги, э, позвольте мне начать работу секции и э, предоставить слово Сергею Сергеевичу Хромову. Представляет Московский политехнический университет. Сергей Сергеевич выступит с докладом на тему филологизация и междисциплинарность как необходимое условие формирования языковых профессиональных компетенций. Наталья Игоревна, коллеги, извините, пожалуйста, за опоздание. Добрый день. Сергей Сергеевич, слышите ли вы меня? Наталья Игоревна, я не вижу его в списке, то есть, к сожалению, никто не добавлялся под этим именем. Кто-то просится, чтобы его приняли в зале ожидания. Да, Юлия но Игоревна. у него нет ни фамилии, ни имени. Хорошо. Коллеги, если я предоставлю слово нашему следующему докладчику, Светлане Юрьевне Буденной. Светлана Юрьевна, слышите ли вы меня? Да, здравствуйте, здравствуйте. Здравствуйте, добрый день. Светлана Юрьевна представляет Московский государственный юридический университет Выступит с докладом «Иностранный язык в межкультурном правовом поле. Обучение юристов межкультурной коммуникации». Да, все верно. Здравствуйте. А, простите, пожалуйста, подскажите, видно ли презентацию? Да, все прекрасно видно. Все да. видно, Светлана Юрьевна. Да, хорошо. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Рада вас приветствовать и э, хотел бы для начала при, э, поблагодарить уважаемых организаторов за возможность э, участия в конференции. Ну, наш э, сегодняшний доклад посвящен иностранному языку в межкультурном правовом поле, а также связанным э, с этим вопросом э, проблемам обучения юристов э, межкультурной коммуникации. Ну, начнем с того, что стремительное развитие общества привело к увеличению межкультурных контактов, в том числе профессиональных, во всех сферах деятельности людей. В связи с чем значительно увеличилось и количество проблем, которые встают на пути специалистов различных отраслей, участников межкультурного профессионального диалога, что, в свою очередь, бросает вызов лингводидактам, отвечающим за подготовку, профессиональную подготовку современных специалистов. Ну, в последние десятилетия мы наблюдаем глобальное распространение английского языка, 
извините, у меня просто заминка произошла со слайдом, извините. Мы наблюдаем глобальное распространение английского языка как средство межкультурного профессионального общения, владение которым увеличивает значительно возможности that gives you opportunities for further cooperation and interaction in the professional sphere with the participation of representatives of different cultures. That English language started as an element of the Anglo-Saxon world and it introduces new elements of the Anglo-Saxon culture to the international communication and it plays a very important role in the sphere in the field of law where we can see the domination of the English lexis of the English terms that have their own specific qualities. Moreover, countries of the English speaking world of the Anglo-Saxon culture still aspire to global leadership and expect representatives of different cultures to use the corresponding terms from their vocabulary well, the research in the field of professional communication of specialists in the field of law shows that when the corresponding terms from the English language and when the English language is used, sociological and cultural factors can't be ignored. And those factors actually define the scale of the dialogue. So using the same language can't fully guarantee successful communication between the representatives of this dialogue. So the more people take part in it, the more cultures participate in this dialogue, the more difficult and the more challenging this dialogue is. It becomes more and more difficult to avoid misunderstanding. You can see the most problematic zones in the field of studying the uh, English law discourse. They are uh, the specific characteristics of the norms in the English law system, abstract character of different laws and rules. A very clear example of this conflicting zones is the examination of particular factors in the field of dialogue in the sphere of law between representatives of the Anglo-Saxon culture and the Chinese uh, culture and it leads to certain misunderstandings and problems. So I think it is necessary to remind about the specific characteristics of the Chinese law system that is very specific, that has very specific terms and that is very challenging for interpretation and uh, successful communication. The Chinese law system is of, of a mixed type that includes ancient rules, laws and traditions, socialist rules and laws, Anglo-Saxon, Roman, German uh, law, elements of law schools. So the potential of the English language as of a language of intercultural dialogue is very limited. And in many cases, it can't fully translate some terms and aspects of this culture. So that's why there are many empty zones in particular, uh, if and if we're speaking about the Chinese language. Uh, Chinese language has no terms as uh, physical damage, immorality and others, and some formal correlations that cause serious communica communicative troubles. Also, I think we can analyze one of the most often used terms uh, in examples of Russian, English and Chinese language, it's fraud. As you can see, definitions are very similar, but anyway, they have different, they're understood differently in Russian and in English language. This. Uh, word is very particular, is very, is very precise. In many aspects, it's very similar. In the English language, this term has a much more broad meaning. 
So using the same term in the pro process of professional communication can be very challenging and almost impossible if people simply don't understand uh, particular terms in the same way. So it's necessary to understand what your partner means by saying this or that. So we believe that having this uh, particular knowledge in the field of law has to be created during the process of studying and during the process of practice. And it is necessary to introduce particular models of education for future specialists in this sphere. And I believe that it will help them avoid many challenges and problems of communication. It becomes one of the most important tasks of corresponding specialists. So building social and cultural competence of future specialists is important even on the earliest stages of education. And it becomes much more important on the more advanced stages of education. It simply is inevitable when particular terminology from the other culture is being studied, special attention has to be paid to social and cultural aspect of intercultural communication. So students have to have deep understanding of the differences between the cultures and they have to know how to overcome these challenges using different linguistical means and it will help them deal with these problems more successfully. I, we believe that it's necessary to take into account the fact that learning more about different aspects of law culture takes place in the, on the second grade uh, of you know, education but it starts on the first, during the first year. And giving and introducing this material is very wide, is very broad. It doesn't pay enough attention to some specific aspects of terms. Van you have only two minutes left. Yes, thank you. So uh, specialists have to pay attention to this issue. So this, uh, so a particular discipline appeared that pays attention to this uh, issues, but it is uh, introduced during master's courses and it is anyway, anyway vital for students on their earlier stages because it helps them to overcome the existing vacuum in this uh, field. So, there is a big volume of information um, is given by their teachers, professors of the foreign languages, and they play a certain role in this process. And we believe that a teacher can't be the only source of information. And uh, we highlight that introducing special mechanisms and practices uh, is very important on the initial stages of education. In conclusion, I'd like to highlight that the international community is dealing with these uh, challenges in the field of intercultural communication successfully using the English language. And it seems to be the solution for these problems. But anyway, in various spheres, English language in various spheres like the sphere of law, English language can't be the universal instrument for solving these issues. And even the tendency of the English language, of the tendency of simplification of the English language, the plain English tendency contradicts the existing intercultural uh, realities and specific features of the communication between representatives of different law schools. So we believe introducing educational policies will be a very important element that will help to diversify and build um, professional communication on a whole set of different conditions and that will help to 
solve the existing problems in the field of communication. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Svetlana Yurievna. Do you have any questions? Svetlana Yurievna introduced a very interesting research and maybe you, uh, maybe some of you deal with the English language in the sphere of law. Do you have any questions? I see no questions in our chat, maybe no questions. Is it okay if I ask something? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Um, so I would like to ask the speaker about uh, her personal opinion on the impact of uh, Brexit on the role that the English language plays globally. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, I think uh, nowadays, um, um, actually, some, of course, um, politics influences, <laughs> influences the whole situation uh, and um, and um, the station with the use of uh, the English language globally. And uh, well, nowadays there is uh, a tendency uh, to um, actually to use some national languages as far as we can uh, observe, to use some national languages. And I think maybe this uh, tendency uh, in the future, um, actually uh, will uh, spread globally and maybe English uh, is likely to lose its position uh, as a global language. Well, in some cases and in some spheres of uh, human activity. But um, as far as Brexit <laughs> is concerned, well, mm, uh, it's hard to say now whether it um, can um, give some maybe effect <laughs> on the use of English language. It's hard to say now, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I want to remind you about technological possibilities of the Zoom platform. Down below, uh, you can see a uh, mark, a sign, an emblem saying translation. By pressing, uh, by clicking on uh, this icon, you will be able to choose the language of interpretation, Russian or English. So again, uh, thank you so much for your contribution. I would like to give an opportunity to speak for our speakers who would deliver their speech about using new educational technologies. Uh, my name is uh, Elena Korshuk, and we will, uh, with my colleague, will separate our job, our speech in two parts. But first of all, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful opportunity, for this conference and for the well thought section. Uh, it's very nice and pleasant to hear that the things that we do is similar to the work that our colleagues from Russia do. So let me start the presentation. Can you hear it? Here we go. We'll be speaking about the aspects that our colleagues have already uh, mentioned in their speeches. Svetlana Yurevna paid her attention to the importance of understanding extralinguistical situation in the process of education. Yes, it is extremely important. So we can say that this was a certain kind of introduction that showed us the importance of multifunctional approach to this intersectional approach. Uh, 
Sophia Oskarovna paid her attention to the necessity of introducing students to public speaking skills that will be useful for further education. Our education, our speech is dedicated to the content and language integrated learning. We are trying to analyze this style of education on the second stage of students' education or, or master's educational programs and will introduce a more human oriented approach. We'll show you the an analysis of students themselves and their attitude to the role of the foreign language. And we'll show you one of our programs that we have developed. This, problem, this program will help to solve the problems that our colleagues have already mentioned. Not, it's not a secret that that the element that is called CLIL has existed for an extremely long period of time in the Soviet Union. It was introduced in 1971. It was clear in that decision that all students had to have skills of foreign language skills. Maybe you can remember that students had to spend more than 240 hours learning foreign languages during the educational programs because it was extremely important and special additional classes were introduced and people had such an opportunity. And this volume of time spent for learning foreign languages gave us an opportunity to to introduce a much more professional and a much more advanced approach. So we tried to develop this issue. We had much more materials. Back then, specialists introduced specific programs that were based on the existing uh, and accumulated materials. It wasn't much, but Anyway, now we have much more materials and we can introduce new programs basing on the information that students already have. Learning of the foreign language has one difficult. The main principle of teaching foreign language is giving only one challenge, is giving only one difficult task because otherwise students won't be able to manage other challenges effectively. So this is the main principle. Only one challenge has to be introduced. David Marsh, the person who introduced the author of this CLIL um, learning technique, said that education using foreign language education on uh, that is organized using uh, means of the foreign language is very good and beneficial for the students. It helps them to develop their memory, speaking skills and many other. And anyway, this is a certain challenge for the existing model of education, the Soviet model of education. So how can we preserve the principles from the old practice and still introduce some new methods that will help them improve their skills and develop their professional knowledge. So in the right part of the screen, you can see the image of this CLIL approach that has precise numbers suggested by Mr. Marsh. He says that 
students of the master's programs should get more than 50% of information in foreign language. Well, it seems to be a very useful introduction. Many of us can start introducing new educational programs and new plans regardless of the will of the students. No, I think this is this would be an incorrect approach. We should we should pay attention to the will of students. We should base our programs on the existing demand. So we have to pay attention to what students actually want. And we have to base our approach on this examination of students' desires. So we, taking this into account, introduced special courses, uh, courses for professional journalists. So we introduced special courses that are taught in foreign language. Well, of course, this is a very challenging task for us because we have to learn the basic aspects of journalism and pay attention to that. But including and introducing this foreign language aspect helps to relieve the whole educational process. It can remove the existing barriers and will help students learn more. It can help them pay attention to the linguistic aspect of the uh, aspects that on the one hand are not sufficiently developed and on the other hand it can help them understand the importance of different aspects for their professional activities. So right now I give an opportunity to speak for my colleague Anna Alexandrovna. Thank you very much. So let's move to the next slide. We thought about the necessities and interests of our students and we conducted a quiz using Google. So we asked them several questions about their attitude to foreign language, foreign language classes. So here you can see the basic uh, answers concerning their need for the foreign language of the foreign language. So whether they need, whether they don't need, or whether they don't know. So we chose their attitude to this aspect. Mm, they also sh they also said that they uh, we also asked them if they see a foreign language as an instrument in their future career or whether they don't see so we asked only 20 people 20 students they s study at the magister's programs we don't have many students maybe this is not the most representative these are not the most representative results, but that's all we have. So, most respondents believe that they know a foreign language and that they can uh, use it successfully. Some people believe that the main challenge for them is argumentation and professional communication, protecting their point of view. We also ask them about the situations they find English or foreign languages useful. They said that uh, communication with clients, uh, interviews, formats, and they said that these two are the most important uh, fields where they need foreign language for their professional activities. They are sure that they need 
a foreign language for finding uh, professional information of different types. Moreover, we ask them about different formats of communication. We suggest a different formats of oral or written communication. And they had an opportunity to choose what they prefer, which formats they think are the most useful for them. So they said public speaking, different presentations are the most and taking part in public conferences, press conferences are the most important types of activities for them. Well, of course, this can be explained by the fact that they are journalists and these are elements that are necessary for their professional activities. Also, they said that they need foreign language for finding information, reading articles, finding literature. So we have to mention that they didn't uh, mention different instructions, laws. They said they said that it is not necessary for them. They believe that speaking skills are very important, that they need to have skill, writing skills, uh, CV writing skills, and also they believe that writing skills in general are very important for their professional activities, but they don't believe that written communication is their top priority. Taking into account their interests and preferences and basing on our own experience, we introduced a special uh, course for a language for professional purposes. This um, educational program lasts for two years and we try to introduce some aspects that are very important for professional activity of the masters who will work in the field of journalism and connected fields. This is a very complex and a very difficult task. We ask them to mention the most uh, important aspects. And again, they mentioned uh, communication uh, in communication and writing. So one of the most important elements of this educational program are uh, different kinds of interviews and uh, participation in press conferences using foreign languages. And press conferences are one of the most important elements for future journalists. It is definitely included. Also, we included intercultural communication and different aspects of professional communication with representatives of different cultures. This is very interesting for our students. They really enjoy paying attention to uh, cultural aspects and we believe that we did that it was a good introduction even though the students didn't mention it as a necessary element. The next block is connected with uh, public speaking and presentation skills and students mentioned it in our quizzes and also uh, media analysis. For them, this is one of the most prioritized elements for our program. The goal of this program is to build intercommunicational skills in the professional context. We also did our best to introduce skills required for professional co communication and some elements for their journalistic activity. After students finished this course that we introduced, we asked their opinion. 
we asked them to stress the most useful elements and they highlighted the negotiations aspect, intercultural cooperation and different aspects of professional communication. Uh, also, we tried to analyze different aspects of our program and to find out the connections with different scientific sources in Russian language. And obviously it is connected with the business communication field and discourse analysis. But anyway, students didn't highlight the fact that this information somehow was introduced twice. So we tried to use a much broader approach and showed them information based on the foreigners' vision of the existing informational field. So we believe that paying attention to the interests and requirements of students is very important for further development of our educational programs. We have to pay attention to that and take their opinions into account. And we believe that this is a very stimulating factor that helps them in, to increase their motivation and learn more. Uh, thank you very much. So I think, and I hope, dear colleagues, that you paid attention to the fact that our program includes public speaking skills that is required for negotiations, press conferences and different presentations. And uh, the aspect that Sofia Oskarovna mentioned and uh, the aspects mentioned by Svetlana Yurevna. Here it is, intercultural communication that is especially intended to deal with particular professional fields and it is required and important for more high levels of education. It is very important for our students to know this professional approach. One more thing I wanted to add. So uh, this uh, idea of uh, instructing narratives uh, uh, to the uh, studentship was a very relevant way back when I was a student. Uh, 30 years ago, when I was a student, uh, this subject matter was researched, uh, was uh, very uh, focused upon, and uh, well, with some success at least. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for active uh, listening. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> stand ready to take your questions. <clears throat> thank you so much, Elena Vladimirovna. Anna Alexandrovna, thank you. Of course, our colleagues from the Belarusian State University are doing uh, extremely uh, relevant uh, research both specialists and the academic teaching of learners according to the program? Uh, well, what we have to do at many levels is uh, there are two things that are going on at, uh, at the Belarusian State University right now. On the one hand, we have specialists who provide courses, specialized courses in English. On the other hand, uh, we have to, to train ourselves to be specialists in this or that uh, particular uh, branch of, of knowledge. If that answers your question. Thank you for your response. 
This was a question from Alexina Ilarionovna. Colleagues, uh, more questions, please. I have a question, if I may. I have a relationship to journalism, uh, so this is a very interesting report that uh, I have heard from you. Now, you have um, advanced an idea that uh, the borderline between uh, foreign language instruction uh, as such and uh, foreign language uh, instruction as a profession um, is blurred. How do you uh, overcome this challenge? What do you train uh, your students in? Your journalism in English or a combination? We train in uh, professional communication in the English form, in a foreign language. So, uh, in other words, uh, foreign language as a profession, language mediation. There's a reason behind my uh, question. Uh, some time ago, uh, we have been sharply criticized uh, for our practices. Uh, we have uh, based ourselves uh, on uh, the materials from Australia. We've been told by our superiors that we were wrong. Uh, since uh, the Australian material is uh, very difficult, uh, we should focus uh, simply on training foreign language. <laughs> All right, so uh, your in innovation <laughs> was struck down. It was, it was indeed. Don't worry. We train uh, our students on uh, training uh, manuals and aids uh, that we brought from the Moscow State University. Thank you, Olga Karlovna, for your question. No more questions? Let's move on. I give the floor. Promoting critical thinking uh, at an LSP course. Okay, can you hear me, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, um, it's a pleasure I can be with you today. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I see that the uh, structure of the uh, session is very well prepared because my presentation hopefully fits uh, your um, line of ideas presented so far. Uh, I'd like to talk about promoting critical thinking at an LSP course because I teach English for specific purposes, especially to students of international relations and also academic English for academic writing or other discourse. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, um, talk along this outline very shortly because I think uh, I'd rather present a set of complex activities I have designed in order to demonstrate what I mean, as the uh, ideas presented here are well known in this circle. Uh, for instance, collaborative learning and the uh, overwhelming uh, amount of information which students are exposed to nowadays. So it seems that uh, due to the fact that we're all uh, bombarded by the internet with information, it seems that students are losing their ability uh, on one hand to collaborate and on the other hand to, um, to uh, develop arguments. Uh, however, in methodology, we, sh we see a renewal of uh, uh, ways of teaching them, such as collaborative, cooperative, problem-based or task-based teaching and learning. 
And also, I'd like to point out that this overlap with the uh, uh, expansive cycles of knowledge creation uh, in activity systems, which were described by Engström in 1999. And this is the point where I think uh, English for specific purposes and uh, English for academic purposes might overlap. Um, if you check the uh, expansive cycles of knowledge creation in activity, the systems presented here. These are the steps, and I think at least three points uh, would fit an English class for specific purposes, especially in the light that it's been discovered students need the ability to, uh, to reason critically and to think critically more than ever, because we live in an era of deception, unfortunately. Um, a short overview of collaborative learning, because it's um, familiar to all of you. I would like to highlight only uh, that um, it very often involves critical thinking, because it allows small team independent work among students, which is intended to improve um, empathy and group co cohesion among them, but also uh, students of uh, different levels of knowledge can be involved. And in my view, it's an advantage in higher education because uh, very often we have uh, students of various standards of knowledge due to the elective courses. So I thought let's exploit that. Also, uh, the critical thinking and problem solving uh, combination of activities might end in near real life cooperation among students. And this is one of the reasons why I think uh, ESP classes can be a step towards academic writing or rather discourse. Why do I prefer the phrase academic discourse? It's because it's been pointed out by Maggie Charles, for instance, that um, the uh, difference between written academic language and spoken academic language is not exactly the same nowadays as we have thought so far. Uh, uh, based on corpus analysis, she has found that the major difference is that written academic language is more condensed as far as information content is concerned, whereas spoken academic language uh, is uh, more like a narrative. And of course, it involves more interpersonal components. But the conclusion is, and she has also proven that, uh, students gradually omit the narrative feature from their academic uh, discourse as they progress with their studies. So perhaps we can um, enhance that process during the LSP classes. And also, uh, lexical bundles are important, as Charles has highlighted. So perhaps the uh, ESP classes can uh, um, provide a useful uh, background for uh, academic writing classes anyway. Um, we know that uh, sometimes we are challenged by the students deteriorating concentration skills, which has been described by uh, much of the literature. References are included later. And uh, we experience that they prefer to look up data, especially on the net, instead of reasoning because reasoning and arguments uh, involve abstract thinking, which we are declining in allegedly due to the multimedia environment in which we live and the quick shift of information and attention uh, caused by the um, internet. Uh, the challenges to students on the side of productive skills, according to my findings are that they find it hard to state their view shortly in a non-narrative form. And secondly, uh, they find it difficult to reason with arguments. Instead, they grow emotional. On the side of receptive skills, uh, they find it hard to extract the message from texts, reading comprehension problems. They are not used to long and in-depth texts anymore. And they find it difficult to recognize arguments. Uh, there is even a question uh, posed here 
does PowerPoint really destroy the natural way of argumentation? I'm asking while I'm holding a PowerPoint presentation myself. But I think the conclusion is, uh, to some extent, yes, because the uh, visual uh, images provide the arguments themselves instead of a discussion or a rhetorical speech. UNESCO recommends uh, promoting critical thinking on its homepage. Uh, but let's stay with uh, the short definition by Hughes, which says at a very basic level, critical thinking, of course, it involves asking the appropriate question and so on. But critical thinking is finding out whether something is true, partly true or not true at all. Uh, critical thinking is also linked to Bloom's taxonomy, which has been revised by uh, Anderson and Krautwall in uh, 2001. And these are the steps of Bloom's taxonomy, which are supposed to be included in the learning process. As you probably know, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating and creating. But as I underscored at the beginning of the presentation, uh, they overlap with the uh, knowledge uh, creation systems at work. I, I have designed a collaborative activity for a small class of 8 to 12 students. Uh, they are supposed to be students of international relations and it can be an online or offline or a blended course according to my plans. Actually, I have uh, tested the basis of this uh, activity but for the sake of this presentation, I have added some variations. The learning outcome should be the exploit, exploitation of their um, uh, being hooked on the internet and uh, data uh, looking up, uh, but also uh, collaboration is in the focus. So in the first step, I would assign a topic, in our case, the question, what does Africa need? And for the topic, I would ask them to um, uh, include three uh, propositions. Uh, reference is to Huber and Snyder. Uh, the book by Huber and Snyder, which is included in the references list afterwards, um, is my favorite because it includes very simple rhetoric based explanations and activities. So, um, they should um, uh, consider a proposition of fact, which asserts uh, what the state of affairs is, a proposition of value, which um, includes uh, the evaluation whether something is good or bad, right or wrong, and a proposition of policy, to put it simply, what should be done about the state of affairs. In task two, I would offer them a proposition of fact. For instance, Africa lacks in capital investment. And then I would ask them to add a proposition of value and a proposition of policy. This would help them with structuring their turn when it comes to a discussion. My examples are a bit um, far-fetched, of course, because I wanted to demonstrate that rather unexpected um, reactions are possible. In the next step, I would ask them to extend their propositions by supporting them with arguments. Uh, they are still working in pairs and I have added some um, uh, model arguments also. Um, of course, arguments can be various, but that's the purpose because I would like to put them in um, small groups or in class and arrange a debate publicly. Uh, when, we, when we move on, um, they, they need to find evidence to underpin their argument. And this is the point where I would refer them to, to the internet or any other source. Uh, I can even provide sources which are carefully checked. And uh, while I was preparing this task, uh, I have um, concluded that uh, the teacher works most when he or she doesn't seem to be present in the uh, class at all. Uh, so um, these sources and of course the study of the short one page long uh, extracts of the text which are uh, uh, assigned from the links 
can be um, assigned as a prerequisite, maybe homework in preparation for the class, or as a kind of improvised uh, data collection, but only to relatively high level knowledge students, say level C1. In practice, these were the links that I provided for students uh, as they were divided into uh, four and then five uh, groups. As you see, they are from reliable sources. So hopefully, uh, pedagogically or educationally, these do not contradict the um, special dis disciplinary uh, courses which they are taking. Uh, on the contrary, perhaps uh, these uh, illicit knowledge which they have actually gained from their previous courses or parallel courses. Then I would ask them to write a short summary in a paragraph of not more than five to six sentences. This is intended to limit their narrative. And um, I think it's a, a useful method to kind of entertain them online. If a third student is assigned in the case, case of an online class to provide the academic vocabulary. Again, I would not uh, offer unlimited academic vocabulary, just the signpost verbs or phrases which are needed for writing the short summary uh, and which would structure the summary. So I would um, give the uh, academic vocabulary provider one or two cards with about three to five phrases to state an opinion, to introduce an argument, and so on. And then in the uh, critical thinking phrase, I would uh, ask them to present their summaries to the rest of the class. And in order to make them listen, because very often they miss the uh, uh, the uh, listening part that is missed to listen to the uh, arguments or opinion of the others, you know, thinking about uh, how to plan their turn when it comes to uh, them. I would ask them to write on one question for each pair who presents, uh, who present their um, opinion. And then I would appoint a moderator from the class uh, in order to have a questions and answers session. And finally, I think as a variation, the activity can be repeated if I do not provide a proposition of uh, fact, rather a proposition of value or a proposition of policy, they can even uh, realize how implicit uh, meaning works, uh, for example, in journalism, and how a proposition of fact actually can be inferred uh, inherently or um, implicitly from um, a proposition of value or a proposition of policy. So this is as far as I have managed to get in um, trying to combine um, ESP and academic discourse. I prefer academic discourse because I think nowadays the focus is more on um, uh, live, real life debates uh, than uh, writing long academic texts. And even when they take a job, they will probably be asked to, uh, for example, to reason during a meeting, not to mention their favorite activity, which is commenting and posting on the social media. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Eva, thank you so much for this in insightful presentation and thank you for sharing uh, your activities uh, with us. Uh, they are really of very practical value. Уважаемые коллеги, пожалуйста, вопросы. Наши переводчики... Your colleagues, do you have any questions? They can be interpreted. Um, but you also can ask the questions in English. You're welcome. Uh, Elena Vladimirovna. Uh, just a little side notice, a side kick to support your argument about the, the lack of attention span. Exactly, the, the master students that we currently spoke about told me that they hate it when we send them text materials to get ready for their 
um, uh, distance courses, they prefer it in the form of PowerPoint presentations because it's easier for them when the information is structured and you sort of see the end of it. Thank you very much for the confirmation of one of the basic ideas. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, I would like to give an opportunity to speak. Uh, Valentina Lariodovna Narolinay. She represents a medical university and she will introduce a speech dedicated to the medical to the sphere of medical education. She will talk about flexible use of translingual situation in medical education. Can you hear me, dear colleagues? Yes. Dear colleagues, I'm very happy to speak today. I take part in this conference every year. I missed it only the previous year. And it was the time when the COVID-19 pandemic started, or maybe it was the year before, but anyway, it was only once. Uh, dear colleagues, I would like to connect my speech with a speech, uh, with um, Eva's speech of Ms. Yakushny. She paid attention to, to the development of critical thinking skills This is the main goal of education. This is also a very important goal in the field of medical education because, because it helps to develop clinical and academic approach. Medical education prepares future medical specialists. It is a very important and fundamental basis for their future career. And they have to make very difficult and very important decisions concerning other people's help, health. And it is very important in current times. I work in this sphere for a very long period of time, for many years. And our university organizes different international programs that deal with education of foreign students and I would like to say that the conditions have very rapidly changed for the last 20 or 30 years. We work in conditions of international, of international communication in the field of higher education and it requires certain flexibility. People from all over the world participate and they bring their languages with them. So we use not only in the English language, we use many other languages and many universities participate in this exchange program. Altogether, we are preparing medical specialists and all students have their own native languages they learn Latin language, Russian language, and most definitely they use the English language as an instrument for intercultural communication. And also English language is a very important instrument for using modern technologies and computers and other technological devices. So a certain challenge appeared. We understood the necessity of creating a certain kind of linguistic identity of our students. The main components of this multilingual identity are 
certain aspects, like their skills in the field of using multiple languages. This is a vital element for successful education and work. They have to know certain, a whole range of foreign languages that will help them to work successfully. The other key element is their intercultural communicative competence. So they have to pay certain respect to cultures, values and traditions of other peoples. It is very important for successful cooperation between students and teachers <laughs> and this improves the overall studying and learning experience. The other component of this system is the cross-cultural communication. I've chosen this image. It shows the important elements of this cross-cultural communication, the importance of paying attention to different identity issues, cultural values, beliefs, basically paying respect to all these factors will improve the overall working experience and all that helps to improve the educational activity. It helps to understand each one and each other better. Also, I'd like to highlight another factor, another component. This component becomes much more important in medical universities. It is developing flexible communicative skills for future medical workers simply because future specialists will work with other people and they have to be well prepared for this communication and also this will be useful for future communication with other specialists in the medical sphere it will improve the overall functioning of this global medical system The Euro European uh, scientists pay special attention to this uh, issue. Um, let me show you one work where special attention is paid to it, to this issue. So we see um, uh, European scientists, uh, Carlo, uh, Carlo Joseph Thanos, and others, specialists who pay special attention to the translingual practice, the importance of the English language as an instrument of intercultural cooperation. Uh, Russian scientists also paid attention to these issues, but they uh, started working in this field for the only two years ago so it is a pretty modern sphere we can see specialists from our country uh, like uh, proshina Halapina, who examined these issues they delve deeper into the topic of translingual communication in different spheres of communication and different spheres of professional activities like technology and natural sciences. So why is this issue so important? In our university, a special discussion appeared. Foreign students want, wanted to use different languages 
during the educational classes. They wanted to use the English, Latin, they wanted to use their own native languages, and they needed practice. And we started thinking about the possibility of that. Can we use multiple languages during our educational process? And so we decided to organize a research. We visited different classes, we talked to different students, we listened to speeches of different teachers and foreign students. And I can say that this is a great success. It's a great... Um, it was great that we had necessary materials for our research. So the question was, can we use multiple languages for our educational programs? Uh, even though students from different countries learn all together, learn in one group. And we understood that many students wanted to use diff multiple languages during their education. Even though students from different countries formed, did, formed groups, we wanted to identify in which kinds of activities, in, on what stages using multiple languages can be beneficial. So we believe that Russian language is one of the most important for our students because it helps them for their further working experience. Because they will work with Russians who are getting medical treatment in Russian medical institutions. So we highlighted the importance of the Russian language in their educational process. The next language, the next, the second most important language, according to the point of view of our professors and students, is Latin. And also, um, doctors communicate with their patients in Russian and Latin language is the ancient language of medicine. It is the source of medical terminology and plays a very important cultural role. You see a quote that is very important. So, scientists from all over the world, from Western Europe and from Russia, pay special attention to the importance of Latin language. And also, one of the most important issues is the lack of communication with the patients and paying attention to improving communicative skills for our future medical specialists is one of the most important priorities for our educational systems. We pay special attention to English language, English medical language. Uh, it is both a very important instrument for medical work and work with digital technologies. Also, it is an instrument of intercultural communication. But we also pay great attention to other languages. On this slide you can see 
different words from English and Latin language that are actively used by our uh, specialists. Latin language is very useful for proper understanding of medical terms. So our students take part in scientific research, in different scientific researches where they actively use Latin language. English language is the language of digital technologies and modern communication. It is actively used by students of different professions, of different specialities. Obviously, medical education plays a very important role in moral and ethic development of the future medical specialist. Medical education imposes certain moral standards on future specialists and they play the most fundamental role. And digital technologies helped us very much during the COVID-19 pandemic. We all worked and still use different digital technologies. We work with our foreign students. Our, our students also use these digital technologies. So, to put it simply, digital technologies help us to conduct the educational process in the current pandemic conditions. Discussions can be held. These technologies can be used for medical cases and help to develop critical thinking and our research showed that students were very interested in these discussions. They started using their native um, languages. They use different languages to express their thoughts, their ideas, and it actually reflects the functionality of multiple languages because some languages are easier to express different ideas. So it shows translinguism in action. I emphasize this aspect, particularly in the context of medical education, because I believe that native languages are very important for uh, foreign students. They sim simplify their life, they help them assimilate better to communicate. Uh, and Russian students actually do their best to learn new languages so foreign students simply inspire our future medical specialists and this mutually beneficial interaction is very useful for medical work so here are the results of our research flexible approach in the field of trans translingual communication is very important and beneficial for modern medical for modern medical education it helps to make the overall educational process much better when they are together they uh, make a community uh, they uh, enjoy in, uh, social uh, contact they uh, visit uh, museums and groups. Uh, we promote the use of uh, uh, national languages. Uh, I think this is uh, very well for the comfort of the students. So we have many foreign students uh, and uh, 
студентов. Uh, many uh, professors uh, in the uh, institute in the, in the medical school uh, like uh, to have um, academic groups made of foreign students. Uh, it is also beneficial uh, for the host country, for the host university. It works uh, to build diversity, uh, to uh, build on diversity, to enrich uh, local contacts. It is very difficult today uh, to identify the leading language. As I've said, as uh, not only I am uh, saying that, that uh, the border lines are getting blurred. Instruction of a um, science of a subject matter is done in a variety of languages at the same, at the same time. Students can uh, easily shift from one language to another. I believe this is something we ought to welcome. Thank you, thank you, Valentina Ilarionovna. Uh, flexibility is uh, the order of the day. Any questions? Uh, Elena Vladimirovna, пожалуйста. Elena Vladimirovna, you have a question. Your presentation uh, is fully in line with our practice. My question is as follows. The speed of uh, shifting from one language uh, to another, is it a block? How quickly do they do it? Well, uh, you know something, uh, foreign students do it a lot quicker than Russian students. Russian students uh, do not enjoy the favorable climate, as uh, uh, you've been talking uh, about, Elena Vladimirovna. Remember 1961, when we had all the time in the world to study languages, we also had additional uh, supplementary classes. Today, uh, the amount of time dedicated to language is, uh, is very limited. And that has to be divided between general English and special English. Hence uh, is the imperative uh, to um, engage Russian language students uh, into multicultural communication. It is a real challenge to them. The pressure is simply too high. We use a different uh, format, uh, dialogues, uh, old competitions, free discussions uh, together with foreign students. We believe uh, it uh, has become mainstream in our medical training. We've been practicing this format uh, for many, many years. For instance, we have uh, competitions uh, that uh, bring uh, together foreign students and Russian students in one team. Uh, you will be very welcome uh, in our university. Come on over and uh, join us. In November. Come in November. We have uh, the next session in November. You have my uh, contacts. You have my address. Don't hesitate. Thank you, Valentina Ilarionovna. It was a very informative presentation. Bajene, Djukanova, and Anna Harnao are not present today. Therefore, I uh, move on to Mariana Mircheva. The Institute of uh, National and Global Economy. 
Bulgaria. She will uh, discuss SWOT analysis of uh, teaching ESP online. Please. Thank you very much, Ms. Tvetkova. I will try to share my screen now uh, with you. Uh, just a second. Uh. Mm. No, nothing is. Uh, can you give me a second just to figure yeah, yeah, out sure. uh, what's going on here? I'm sorry for that technical difficulty. That's okay. Yes, it works fine. We can see everything fine. Okay, I think I'm ready now. Yes, you're very welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure and uh, a special honor for me to be uh, here today with you all. And uh, I would like to say that uh, all the presentations I heard so far were really great, intriguing, uh, and I would like to thank you all uh, for presenting on these uh, topics. Uh, okay, and... Um, uh, I would like to start with a very brief um, introduction of just a few words to say about uh, the university I've been working at uh, over the past 20 plus years. So this is the University of National and World Economy, and it is the largest in Sofia, Bulgaria, and it is the largest and the oldest higher school of economics, management and administration in Bulgaria and in Southeastern Europe. Students at the Faculty of International Economics and Politics, that's the faculty where I've been teaching, major mostly in international economic relations, international relations and political studies. Their level of English upon admission is B2 according to the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. Our work at the university is focused on improving their language skills in all relevant fields of study. And uh, uh, we teach a lot of terminology, business English, political uh, English, uh, legal English. We heavily rely on authentic materials published in specialized uh, editions. And the Economist newspaper is um, uh, is one of our favorites. We listen to real life interviews and talks, and we definitely try to prepare our students to be able to perform and be efficient in uh, real life situations. In the virtual classroom, those of us who teach English for specific purposes, university students, encounter the same difficulties like those who teach general English courses, and we enjoy the same benefits of technology. We at the university use the platform provided by Microsoft MS Teams for our online classes and the application MS Forms, again provided by Microsoft for tests and exams. So what does the digital classroom have that makes it better than the classical or the conventional one? 
Technology provides variety and flexibility. Learner autonomy, self-assessment, collaboration opportunities for professional development. Online learning offers teachers an efficient way to deliver lessons to students. Teachers can use a wide range of tools, such as videos, PDFs, podcasts, to prepare their lessons and software applications to communicate with their students. By extending the lesson plan beyond traditional textbooks to include online resources, teachers are able to become more efficient educators. Teaching at the, the university is predominantly synchronous. The time we spend with our students online is exactly the same as the time we spent in the classroom before we shifted to online teaching. We still use the textbooks and materials we used before the pandemic, but time and experience taught us that there should be greater diversity. Technology helps us make resources easily available for students. We can upload them in the team, on an LMS, or any other available platform or channel. This suggests that we can go for different formats and provide more personal feedback. The materials we store on our computers are accessible at any time. This means that we can quickly provide new materials if students complete the tasks assigned, or we can ask them to watch or read something that is available online. To achieve greater student engagement, teachers need to be creative. And if students feel, feel involved in the teaching learning process, they improve performance and achieve better results. Although students at the university pass an entrance exam in English, we still get pretty heterogeneous classes, which can be very challenging. Online teaching with its range of options and resources can be personalized in many ways. Flexible learning via e-learning modules allows the learners to grasp the concept at their own pace. With pre-recorded videos and e-notes available in LMS, learners can replay and retain better. And now on the next slide, I would like uh, to show you the results from a survey conducted at the university. And um, it was uh, conducted at the beginning of the academic year 2020, this one, 2021, uh, where three English language lecturers um, conducted this survey whose goal was to evaluate the digital competence of the language teachers. The questionnaire they used is based on the European Digital Competence Framework for Educators. The results are summarized in this table and we can see that language teachers were quite well prepared to perform in the new environment. Only one of the 19 people who participated in the survey felt strong anxiety about using technology in the classroom, and one perceived himself as an explorer. The rest exhibited a different degree of readiness and computer literacy. Today, things are different. There are no longer lecturers who perceive themselves as newcomers or explorers. Another strength that I would like to point out uh, of online classes uh, uh, this is related to collaboration with colleagues. Our experience shows that collaboration runs smoothly online. We share materials for both classwork and exams, and these materials can be edited by other colleagues, which guarantees better quality of the tasks and exercises, clarity of instructions, error-free tasks, and diversity. The, the collaboration process is productive, and the result is materials created by professionals. And again, this is made possible through this application MS forms, which makes really uh, the whole process extremely smooth. Now I would like to point out a few weaknesses. The first, and I would say the greatest weakness of online teaching is the lack of face-to-face -face contact. We have always been cognizant of the fact that body language plays an important role in our work. And now we are deprived of this type of nonverbal communication. In the virtual classroom, we rely on students' verbal response, mostly. Preparing lessons, for, uh, preparing lessons can be time consuming. 
educators put a lot of effort into finding ways to motivate the weaker students. They invest a lot of time to prepare diverse materials for the better students to keep them interested. It takes a lot of time to check different type tasks that have been assigned and to give feedback. Materials we prepare in advance have to be adapted. So we have to change the format of videos, cut or adapt audios to make them suitable for the lessons. Uh, and of course, we also have this uh, issue with uh, finding authentic materials from reliable sites and sources. Students can learn a lot from being in the company of their peers. However, in an online class, there are minimal physical interactions between students, students and teachers, and this uh, often results in a sense of isolation for the students. So again, it's the teacher's role here to be uh, able to involve the students, to um, make them or to stimulate them to participate. Uh, a problem that we have here uh, at our university is uh, uh, the, the fact that classes are quite long. We have four classes organized in two blocks, each lasting 90 minutes, and it is difficult for students to stay focused for such a long time. But again, this is something we have no control over. We cannot give them breaks too often because a 10 minute break usually becomes a 15 or 20 minute one and the whole teaching process is disrupted. So lecturers have to be able to manage time really well to plan the lesson carefully. And uh, here is the point to mention that now our work is divided between before the class, during the class, and after the class. Uh, one final point that I would like to mention here uh, in the witnesses uh, uh, part of the SWOT analysis is uh, uh, the weak internet connection or the technical problems that might arise during the class. All these things can hinder teaching and cause a lot of anxiety both for students and for lecturers. The next element are the opportunities that online teaching provides. So in today's classroom, we have a computer literate, tech savvy students, and we should be able to match their technical skills. We have been putting off this encounter for some time, I must say, but this can no longer be done. Both students and educators get the chance to improve their technical skills and to develop professionally. Now is the time to introduce truly the flipped classroom and to change from a teacher-centered education to student-centered learning. When students commit themselves to the process of learning, academic outcomes can soar. And when students don't feel engaged and inspired, their academic achievement can tumble. Student-centered learning allows greater flexibility to work in small groups or learn remotely. And student-centered learning does not sideline or diminish the role of teachers. Instead, it seeks to use teachers' expertise in different ways to increase student engagement. Teachers guide students toward meaningful engagement with the materials they provide. And the final component, these are the threats. So it happens often that we ask ourselves questions related to privacy issues. Can I take screenshots? Am I allowed to record students? Together with those privacy issues, we also um, have issues related to online security. We keep a lot of information about our students and we should make sure that it is properly stored. And of course, for all that, we rely on the support provided by the uh, technical staff at the university, people who are responsible for online security. We could have problems with copyright infringement, but the, again, the teacher is the one who has to inform the students what is allowed to be, uh, what sources are, uh, can be used, and how they uh, are expected to quote in their writing or the presentations they uh, deliver in class. IT companies are extremely innovative and fall over one another to create and design new applications and tools 
which at some point will make it difficult for all users to choose the right platform or tool to use. And uh, one last thing that I would like to mention here are the health hazards. Uh, the time that uh, both teachers or lecturers and students spend in front of the computer, these are long hours, and um, this is one uh, of the biggest concerns of online learning. So the, uh, the lessons that we learned over the past year, the pandemic enforced a new reality. Schools and universities had to shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching overnight. It is for the first time that all courses are exclusively taught online. Studies show that faculty handle online teaching differently and experiences differ. A research conducted by German scholars distinguishes four types of approach to teaching. The first one being learning, the learning approach, or uh, to paraphrase that, this is striving to develop competence. The second one is the performance approach or striving to be perceived as competent. Performance avoidance is the third one, striving to avoid appearing incompetent and work avoidance, striving to get through the day with little effort. The same research concludes that a positive attitude to online teaching guarantees better results, and this whole new reality is perceived as a positive challenge and an opportunity for competence development. Results show <clears throat> that learning approach goals of faculty were positively associated with perceiving the shift to online teaching as a positive challenge and as useful for their own competence development. Performance avoidance and work avoidance goals perceive this change as threatening, which in turn has a negative impact on student rating of teaching quality. It goes without saying that online teaching will continue to develop, improve and be preferred depending on goals. But it is also certain that the classical classroom will not disappear. Teach, uh, technology is not something to be afraid of. It is something that we should embrace and allow it to make our work easier. Going back to the classical classroom is what most of my colleagues and I are looking forward to, forward to. It is not that we do not appreciate all the doors that this transfer to online teaching has opened for us, but we still think that teaching is about face-to-face -face communication and interaction, about getting intermediate, both verbal and nonverbal feedback, which is something we cannot really get in the, uh, during our online classes. We will continue to use the virtual learning environment and learning management systems, but this should be combined with the work in the brick and mortar classroom. So I would like to thank you all for your attention. Uh, you can see my contact here. And uh, on that uh, last um, slide, I have uh, put the title of the research I mentioned of the German uh, professors, representatives of two major German universities, the University of Augsburg and University of Mannheim. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Christopher, could you please zoom up the uh, final slide, the last slide with uh, yes. references? Thank you. Большое спасибо, госпожа Мирчева, безусловно. Thank you very much. It is a very important topic. Uh, dear colleagues, do you have any questions? Не вижу сейчас чат. Возможно, кто-то пишет. I see no written questions. Спасибо, Юлия Эдуардовна. There are no questions. <coughs> Thank you very much. We have one more speech.
on the topic that is closely connected with the current realities. It deals with online formats of education. Ms. Stepanova would like to speak about Teaching German commercial correspondence uh, in distance learning. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to deliver a speech on teaching German commercial correspondence uh, in distance learning. Traditionally, this is, has always been a very important aspect of educational activity of our department in Gimo University. But um, unfortunately, less time is paid to this program. Right now, there are only 40 academic hours left, or 20 classes. This program deals with a very wide range of different topics. You can see them on the screen. They deal with the main aspects of economic and financial activities, with demand, prices, deliveries, for different speciality, specializations like marketing, trade. And the main idea, the main goal of this whole course is to introduce interpreting skills for future specialists. This course was very successful. The average mark students is 84.2%, so it is very good mark students. And this program successfully. I would like to mention several aspects, uh, like business correspondence, interpretation, unfortunately some aspects were cut off because we don't have enough time. On the one hand, it simplifies our task because the education becomes much more simplified, but on the other hand, a certain range of criteria that are characteristic for German business um, correspondence should be taught and introduced to our students. This is for ex an example of a German financial document. I would like to attract your attention to some aspects of structure. So forms of address, the whole overall structure is somehow similar to the Russian, to that which we are used to, but, but it has some particular aspects. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to work with our students and to teach them some particular aspects of stylistics. But this is one of the most important aspects that we need to pay attention to. The other thing is translating different contracts and agreements. This was included into the existing programs. We introduced certain types of contracts and agreements to our students. We explained the basic differences, but again, this whole overall material was simplified and made short. On the right, you see a paragraph that introduces the basic aspects of agreements and different kinds of contracts. We also added some basic descriptions 
existing abbreviations, you can see them on the left. We believe that giving this information is extremely important. Giving explanations and definitions is very important for successful study. We also add some examples of different documents, in particular, in particular contracts. We also added some lexical exercises, some vocabulary exercises. The basis is a contract between two sides and students learn how to translate this, doc, this type of documents in a proper way. Then we give special vocabulary, different exercises that will help our students to increase and improve their active vocabulary. If some time is left, we discuss certain aspects of financial activities or financial documents with our students. We talk about different types of financial documents. We believe that this is a very important experience for our students what they can expect from different situations, etc. We also show the most widespread mistakes that students make during interpretation. We explain the main and basic differences between words that sound similar in Russian but have an absolutely different meaning in German. Uh, here you can see an example of a similar exercise. Giving students information about the most basic communicative techniques that will be useful for dialogues is very important. We also introduced these materials into our program. But anyway, this is a huge topic that we can spend much time talking about. Also, we have some problems with checking the results of our students because we simply don't have any time left for checking and testing their knowledge of putting down information for simultaneous translation and other particular techniques. But we pay attention to the most basic and the most important aspects of studying process. Then goes assessment of their interpretation skills. We check their language skills in the form of direct communication, so you can't cheat. We also invite them to participate in interpretation of different conferences and online events. This gives them necessary practical experience. Unfortunately, we had to minimize the volume of information. We don't have enough time to explain the most widespread and the most basic mistakes that many students do. Some of them deal with the grammar structures, some of them deal with the vocabulary and some problems that students have with particular terms. 
некоторые примеры частотных оборотов. Also, we pay attention to phonetics and pronunciation, but again, we don't have enough time to pay due time to this process. This is a very important aspect for communication in the digital sphere. We believe that overall introduction of such kind of course is a very important and a very beneficial aspect of development of our educational programs. It is very useful. And we believe that new educational programs, including express and minimized educational programs, can be introduced. Unfortunately, the existing digital format is not the most suitable format for this program because we simply don't have enough time. Подход носителей языка, особенно тщательный к обработке документации, потому что Special attention is paid to working with documents. В Америке достаточно коммуникации на платформе Headhunter и достаточно формального обмена сообщениями для установления контакта. Special requirements concerning the professional skills of our students, concerning the written communication skills exist and it is very important to help our students to develop such kind of skills like writing, uh, written communication, etc. And we believe that our students will get enough information for improving their overall Translation skills, we believe that this is one of our main priorities. We are doing our best in order to use digital technologies that will help us to improve the overall studying process. And right now, the digital technologies are very important, taking into account the existing pandemic conditions. They give certain benefits for successful education and cooperation and communication. But unfortunately, I can't say that we have positive evaluation of these digital technologies in realization of this particular program because it requires live communication and live interaction. I would like to use the phrase of the German author Virus is nothing, environment is everything. So it highlights the importance of the overall general environment. It defines our reaction, it defines our behavior, and defines the way we work. So the environment is extremely important for successful educational practices. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria Alexeyevna, very informative uh, presentation. We have a question, Maria Alexeyevna. Question in our chat. Yulia Erdogan, please read out the question. I think it had to do something with the two way translation. Do you expect a translation of the Russian part of the dialogue? So just a summary of the message. We definitely expect a translation of the Russian part. Not just a summary. Resume. Because there is a lot of specific terms concerning different areas of. Communication. 
uh, and sometimes we need um, to hear a specific word. Действительно, контекст just, uh, можно описывать с помощью uh, каких-то цепких слов, каких-то знаковых слов. Их uh, надо уметь выделить. Yeah, does that answer your question? Как-то я ответил okay. на ваш вопрос. Очень хорошо, спасибо. Спасибо. Thank you, Maria Alexeyevna, once again. I have a question too. My chat is not working. Maybe I've missed something. Uh, however, I uh, followed uh, your presentation pretty closely. Anyway, uh, how uh, do you yeah. frame uh, the final review, final evaluation? Uh, would you try to take into account uh, every aspect? or you focus on specific uh, Большое спасибо за вопрос. Uh, контроль это очень важная uh, часть курса обучения, конечно. Мы стараемся в условиях именно дистанционного обучения облегчить студентам задачи, поэтому мы не проводим большие контрольные работы during, uh, на весь урок в течение семестра. Семестровая работа, если семестр заканчивается дистанционным зачетом, проводится по написанию письма. Естественно, если это дистанционный формат, это электронное письмо. Но если все-таки это очный формат, то мы uh, должны исходить из того, что студенты в состоянии написать письмо от uh, В течение семестра контроль осуществляется в виде лексических диктантов. По uh, каждой теме это uh, 10 слов о выражении, uh, условия, которые студенты должны учить регулярно. Субтитры четвертого курса бакалавриата включает эти фразы достаточно несколько подобрать перевод, потому что мы даем достаточно сокращенные варианты реплик. They have an opportunity to sort out uh, the chat from the brain and the author and the We believe that to uh, wait is a good way uh, to uh, instill uh, Начинать Uh, distinguished colleagues, I think we have um, difficulty in our chat room. So you have the authorization to use chat. Colleagues, I want to give the floor to Olga Karlovna Ilina. She will speak about uh, interactive methods of uh, training English for the purposes of advertising and PR relations. So, uh, the subject matter of uh, my presentation is the interactive methods of training English 
uh, for advertising and the PR purposes. Uh, advertising and PR is uh, one of uh, aspects that uh, students are trained in uh, at our journalist department. Interactive uh, education is an education when uh, students uh, interact with the trainer and uh, with one another. This is the starting point for hybrid education. The quality of the sound of the speaker is very poor. Now this uh, gives us the possibility to introduce uh, interactive forms of education education. My first uh, illustration is flipped classroom, as we call it. Flipped classroom. We had references to flipped classrooms already in the report of our colleague from Bulgaria. So uh, now I'm uh, uh, picking up the relay. Flipped Classroom uh, means another format of uh, handling uh, the training material. Traditionally, uh, the, we, the trainers, ask the students uh, to do an exercise or to read a sentence, a text, to test their understanding uh, and other skills. Flip classroom uh, proceeds from uh, another assumption. Uh, the trainer is there only to monitor the process. Uh, the students uh, engage each other. I will give you a case study, history of public, public relations. We would take a YouTube-based uh, video for some five to six minutes. This uh, is a story about the major elements of international relations uh, from uh, ancient times. Well, a good example is the Egyptian pyramids. Uh, they were built uh, to impress the public. Uh, they were built uh, to dominate uh, the hearts and minds uh, of uh, uh, the people of the period, uh, to formulate uh, their mentality. Another form of uh, you know, PR is uh, social protest or the Boston Tea Drinking Party, a very known historical fact. And Americans uh, protested against uh, taxation uh, by dumping uh, a cargo of uh, tea leaves uh, into the ocean. Another illustration, corruption and uh, <laughs> and um, cup game. It is a type of um, entertainment uh, whereby uh, the showman would travel uh, from state to state with a circus. Uh, he would uh, sell the tickets and uh, run away. So that's what we uh, call uh, uh, the cup game. Another example uh, is a promising uh, an entertainment or an event uh, selling tickets uh, and um, you know just cheating uh, the uh, audience uh, on the real event uh, instead of a uh, outlandish uh, animal for example the showman would uh, just uh, provide um, a puppet 
американские президенты Линкольн, Франклин, Делано Эдвард Бернейс. Но this is uh, not a household name. It is uh, familiar only to the experts. But he is the founding father of uh, PR theory. By the way, he was the nephew of uh, Dr. Freud. The film uh, maybe uh, was uh, in the comfort of the home uh, and um, while commuting, uh, wherever. Following uh, that, uh, we would move on uh, to a questions and answers session. The students would be given out cards with uh, names on them. It would be names of outstanding persons uh, in the, the PR business. Uh, the job of the student uh, assignment means uh, writing a little story about uh, a given person. Topical uh, vocabulary. The students will be asked uh, to make a public statement using uh, topical language. Once they uh, master the topical language, uh, building a story is uh, easy. Another method that we use is uh, the method of case study. It is uh, very well uh, applied uh, to the history of uh, public relations, um, but also to, to, to other subject matters. A case study involves several steps to be taken, one after another. First step we take, we find a, a factual base. For instance, so we uh, take a case study of a company and a concern uh, controversy uh, involving that com company. Let's say it's a tobacco company and uh, the controversy is uh, the nauseous effects of tobacco smoking. We know of a case when uh, the owner of the brand Lucky Strike simply refused to change the brand because it was so popular. Many uh, women uh, did not smoke at that period of time. Uh, smoking uh, among women only related to uh, lowly, uh, low life uh, women. Now, the PR manager made an effort uh, to advance smoking among women, American women. His campaign was uh, brilliant, very smart. Uh, he uh, used a special marking that would uh, coloring that would attract women. Then the uh, students are given an assignment to describe the case in three to five sentences. This is a very short presentation. In the past simple tense. No uh, no verbs. Uh, no other grammatical helpers. Now, this is a text which consists of five sentences. The next assignment is to highlight uh, in one sentence, consisting of seven to nine words, the main idea. 
Now, this is the illustration of that assignment. The mission of the PR campaign was to involve uh, the advanced smoking among, among women as a symbol of non-conformism and independence from men. Stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders involved in the PR campaign? Organizations, uh, individuals, uh, well, it turned out that uh, there are quite a few stakeholders, uh, American women, American tobacco companies, Lucky Strike, including uh, PR experts, psychologists, the students must enumerate all of them. This will be followed by a chronology of events. From uh, recent times uh, into the past. This would be an illustration of uh, growing momentum. This is an exemplary text of uh, such an historical excursion in 1934. Uh, green color became uh, fashionable among women and the PR officer suggested that the lucky strike package should be green and his uh, his idea was that green color would attract women to smoking uh, promote uh, them uh, uh, to buy cigarettes open issues uh, the um, students have to identify issues and challenges uh, uh, along this trajectory. Well, the, the general attitude of the American public towards smoking women was very negative. Uh, oftentimes, I mean, some states uh, they were incarcerated for smoking. Thereafter, students have to offer at least three versions of solutions предложит три варианта решения проблемы во втором абзаце указано что они в общем то все равноправны this uh, is an example of uh, three solutions offered by a student um, he comes to a conclusion uh, that all uh, possible propositions are viable and effective Ольга Карловна, я прошу прощения за... Ольга Карловна, you have to wind up. You have two minutes. And finally, a recommendation. Well, recommendations are written in the first person. And the plan of action. This is a plan of concrete steps based on recommendations. And finally, they will have to write a summary. Summary should be uh, mostly related to the future of PR of a given company. This is followed by a project assignment. Prepare a case scenario of another interesting PR story. Thank you, Olga Karlovna. Доклад. Спасибо огромное. Уважаемые коллеги, технические ассистенты. If I say that the subject covered uh, in today's workshop are very relevant, they are all innovative, they are all practical and uh, promising. They uh, emerge from a real educational practice. I believe our seminar was uh, very effective and fruitful. Question to the presenter. 
Это вопрос к Валентине Илларионовне. Это вопрос к Валентине There is a difference between the mentality as such and the medical mentality, as you say, uh, clinical mentality. Поймите меня тоже правильно, что я не специалист медицинского профиля. Nonetheless, I, you and I have noticed that uh, clinicists uh, have different mentality. It means uh, that when a problem comes up, a cl clinically minded person uh, would uh, begin uh, by collecting that uh, data, uh, talking to the patient, building database, uh, uh, consulting other experts and specialists, and only then uh, making recommendations uh, for treatment. Our household mentality is very different. We do have instances uh, of uh, this sequence uh, when we face a challenge. First, uh, we try to analyze what's going on uh, and try to look for solutions. I believe that uh, clinical mentality is an extension of our household mentality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yours was a very, very informative uh, presentation. Narolina, my address, dog, mail, very easy. I will be uh, happy to read your correspondence. I will be happy to cultivate friendships, to collaborate, to uh, answer questions and uh, otherwise contribute to our common effort. All right, so I'll leave you at that. May I, on your behalf, thank our interpreters and the technical staff. At the 1700 hours, uh, you will continue your participation uh, in master classes. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you.